Alright, alright, let's get into this Lightroom beginner lesson here. So in the process, I'm going to edit a photo start to finish. But we're really just going to go over the basics of what Lightroom is as we go. Import your image, your image is here. And this preset will be for free in my emails as well. I'll email it out. So just make sure you're on the emails. So we're going to be editing this photo. And if we just reset, this is the original photo so we're trying to recreate this photographer's photo so Lightroom very self-explanatory Photoshop like I've been editing for years and years and I still hate Photoshop it's too not intuitive enough but Lightroom is very self-explanatory everything can be used in any way you can up the exposure you can down the exposure you can up the highlights down the highlights what you want to know is how to use it to create a style or the certain look you want. There's no right or wrong way to use these tools and it's all self-explanatory because what actually takes time to learn is how to create styles and that's what I teach now through my emails and in the course and such. How do you get these colors to complement each other? The tools aren't confusing. It's getting these colors to complement and look good in an image and then getting the whole feed nice and cohesive so all the photos blend in with each other and you scroll and it just looks really nice all together. So that's the harder part that takes a bit of learning. Everything here is very self-explanatory and then when you get a bit more advanced you can start to learn how to play with color palettes i want this type of contrast for this mood for the, my wedding styles and then i want this style for for my own personal style i want this when i shoot cars because i want it more gritty i want it more raw i want more texture when there's cars and bikes and then i want it more smooth and dreamy for weddings i want real bright vibrant vibes for weddings i want quite moody rustic tones that is the what i think is most important to learn so over time you'll actually train your eye to be able to you'll you'll begin to be able to oh, this person's using about 30 grain this person is using about 70 sharpening but got the masking up quite high um, this person is doing contrast in the curves and not doing much contrast up here you'll begin to notice these things when you get more reps in and you start to see the differences between curves against these styles so what's the difference between this style why does it result in such a different look and that's also why i created the course because that's what everyone wants to do is create their own unique look like it is takes 10 years to get really good at editing so having a structured way of learning and getting these guest editors raw image preset from different styles and then we look at why is the style different from this style and what what about the tools is creating this style and the differences between these styles we can actually learn styles because all of these tools subjective to the style you want to your images so no right or wrong way to do this so i find it kind of hard to do this beginner tutorial when sharpening is sharpening and then grain is grain Join the course if you are sure you want to commit to leveling up your editing if you think it's a possible long-term career for you. We go pretty in depth so it's not a quick watch through. There's tons of hours, there's, some, there's gonna be 300 videos soon. So it's a quite a very in-depth, extensive program. So if you are serious about photo editing, if you've been investing in quite a bit of gear and you wanna get the most out of that gear and you, instead of buying a slightly better lens, improve all your gear with just like better editing and knowledge of color and stuff like that, knowledge of styles and get these styles that these really talented photographers have been um, have taken years and years to create we've had over a thousand people enroll and it's pretty remarkable i'm gonna double down on growing this course getting more guest editors now so yeah i hope to see you in there comment your favorite photographers down in the description i'll do a tutorial on them or i'll get them into the course teaching i have watched a bunch of workshops courses and everything on the internet available i buy a lot of courses i like to study the market and definitely martin's was the best and the most complete one so sign up for the free training and you'll learn about color theory what the tools do and stuff like that so lots of contrast matted out just really nice so we are starting 
with the raw image as well so this is the no edits at all and we've got a few settings just the curves that are already done and i'm going to walk you through the curves a little later on so i just want to take you through all the settings about how this photo comes together in these tools so beginner friendly so we have the histogram don't stress about the histogram people personally i do not stress about it it's all about the look of the image people use it in a lot of different ways okay so we're down to the exposure tab this is the most important tab for sure in terms of getting your exposure and contrast i like to think of it in terms of detail so we have contrast everything is pretty self-explanatory when you get into lightroom it's the how to use the tools is what you need to learn so obviously shadows means shadows we'll see how we try to recreate this edit um, you will see the power of lightroom and actually understanding lightroom so I'm gonna bring the highlights down so you can see it's just like too bright highlights down you can see it really deepens the image as well um, we're gonna bring down the exposure a bit whites so everything is self-explanatory at the moment blacks this is the darkest parts of your image Okay, texture and clarity and dehaze. Now these are very like personal. It's just adding a effect whether you like it. Some people bring down the clarity. I quite often bring down the clarity um, and bring down the texture, but it's purely taste. So don't stress too much about it. If you like what the look it's doing, do it. But we want some softness and smoothness to this image. Now vibrance is kind of exactly what it's sounds like it's really hard to know exactly what it's doing to your image so for this style definitely we want to chuck up vibrance bring down saturation a bit but we'll work in hsl as well to fine tune uh temperature we just look really warm so we're going to dial it back a bit like all that brown grass probably threw off the white balance just the tiniest bit okay so the curves we're already done and if we turn them off and on so they're adding in a lot of contrast so here, yeah, very basics of curves. Here we have one curve here. So these are the same, and these just add in contrast, okay? So up, you're brightening your image, down, you are darkening it. Left is darks. Over here is the bright parts of your image. So as you can see, it's affecting the bright parts, the middle parts, so it gets a bit whack. We are brightening them, or we are darkening those areas of the image, okay? But generally, you want an S-curve because that get, lets you get contrast. So darker shadows, brighter highlights, more contrast, similar to the contrast slider here. And then what is very common as well is to give a shine to the dark blacks. So it's called an S-curve, and then it's sort of you kick up the bottom point and you get a fade to those blacks very common and then sometimes a fade to the whites is very common as well this curve is, is the same it's just you have sliders okay so s curve and the color channels we are putting in more warmth into the mids and it's a very steep s curve we are getting lots of contrast added so rgb these are the colors that it gives us we can create any color with rgb and the combination of curves here we have added in more warmth and a bit more green so we come off with this really warm orangey red tone to this image which for this particular image looks really nice because we've got orange grass the giraffe is orange uh, the spots on the giraffe are quite red rich red so the colors come off really well in this image before and after of the curves you can see we're adding in a lot a lot of contrast with the curves here the image is pretty warm and i want to cool it down so uh, we are going to go saturation in the shadow so split turning you really are like adding in color to your entire image for sure so any area of your image any color so we've got the shadows we're going to put a decent amount of this blue in 
So I think Lightroom does a really good job of being self-explanatory and easy to use. Like Photoshop is not intuitive at all. Lightroom is very intuitive. It really comes down to understanding color and very in-depth tactics and techniques rather than the tools themselves. So as a beginner, um, you should learn these tools pretty quickly. So blending is, do you want to favor the shadows or the highlights? So favor, uh, putting the shadows also into the highlights. We put a lot in the shadows. So it's just changing the middle point. We're gonna go this way. Now HSL is gonna be where we really get our tones. So we'll start up with the, the greens. Okay, so there's not many greens, just up here on the top. And then the yellows, so this is all the grass. We're gonna come across to the left quite a bit. You can see we get this real rich orange tone. Um, so reds, reds are almost getting like two reds, so we're going to come orange away. Oranges can go a bit red. Desaturate quite a few things. Luminance is the brightness of your colors, so do we want bright yellows? I think we do. Do we want dark yellows? Bright yellows is a very common thing to do. Yellow sort of hits the edges of everything. So it looks quite good when it's enhanced and oranges are very often brought down in people's editing. And then luminance of the background. Blues, so we're brightening our blues. And it gives a really strong shine to colors. Now you want like enough blues to balance all these red tones going on. If you don't have any blues, your image will look too out of balance with all these reds throughout it. Now profile corrections, we won't do it for this image, it doesn't need it, but it's just correcting whatever problem your lens has. Um, so sharpening, just gonna keep it moderate. Uh, as for noise reduction, we're gonna bring it up a bit because at certain styles, it can make your image look less digital because you're kind of blurring it, you're kind of smoothing it out. So quite often I see people bring up the color denoise. Vignetting, so just a little vignette and the midpoints how far in and then around this of the vignette. Do we want to affect the highlights or not? We can, uh, we can choose that if we want. And then the feathering of your vignette very self-explanatory now what's not self-explanatory is the calibration so it's just like the science and the build-up of your tones so when you get very good you'll start to mess with calibration it can just be very hard for beginners to play with this pretty much leave it where it is i think it looks good it might bring down the saturation a little bit of all these blues and reds and stuff i like a desaturated image no, we'll just do it a tiny bit. It's not much of a change. So before and after of that change, not much. It's, I wouldn't worry about it as a beginner. No one really knows what calibration is doing. It's changing the registering of your colors. So I've got free trainings through my emails if you want. If you want to actually understand color in depth as a beginner don't worry about this too much you can watch my free trainings and i will explain what it does it takes a while to explain but you can get a long long way without calibration okay we're about there it's looking a lot like his image so now up the top here so we're not really worrying about the histogram as a beginner like its style is subjective we have these other tools of so this is bringing up all these and then this one's our cropping tool. This one is to straighten your horizon. We've got different crops. So we go four by five all the time because that's Instagram. Then we've got the spot healing brush. So all that this is, is how to remove things from your photo. So you just click on what you want to remove and it will replace it with something else. So then it is removed. Turn down the opacity to get rid of it completely. Size. So in this photo, how we've used this is there's some distracting things from your photo. So it can really level up your editing if you say, let's delete these. So this little stick here, it's kind of like we see the giraffe and then our eye cleaning up your image, really powerful. So this is annoying us a little bit. You take it away, 
by putting these um, clone stamps. We've got spot healing, which is easier to use. You just go over top of something and it will get rid of it for you. Okay, so the eyes, I hardly ever, ever go into this. Now this is gonna play a really big role for this edit. So before and after of filters, brushes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you what each one is doing. So this one is affecting the background. And what we've done is just lifted the blacks a bit and the foreground here, darkening the foreground. So what this does, lifts our eye, guides the eye up into the subject. And then this is the top half of the giraffe. Extra exposure and extra contrast to the subject is do it for every image. It's pretty um, standard for every single time you have a subject, add exposure, add contrast to it. That allows us to do that. Okay, so we have a tiny little mask here on the eye of, so if we just delete it, we bring out the giraffe's eye a little more. Hold spacebar so you can move around. Um, and we bring it back. And yeah, you just see that it sets eyes a bit more. Pretty important. Um, zoom out. So we got this one in the grass here, just brightening the exposure. I mean, I don't think it needs it. What it's doing is just creating a real glow to the grass there. If we just. Okay, so we're just creating a bit of a glow around the subject, around the giraffe them. So, if we, that's all of the filters now, and if we, we increase the blacks back here, so the blacks of the subject, the giraffe, are going to be a bit darker than the blacks in the background, helping the subject stand out. Okay, now we're pretty done, and reset back now we have a color palette going on and we have a lot more rich contrast we've separated the subject from the background and we've framed it with more filters and brushes so that's it for this one this is the before and after yeah that's it for this one sign up to the free training go through the emails get the free presets free raw images free lessons and then enroll if you want to get your own style or want to recreate other people's styles and actually feel understand color in depth uh, in a way that you can intentionally use lightroom um, and not play around and wonder why you're moving tools okay and yeah i'll catch you in the next one and yeah just let me know who you want to see on this channel um new format because i think short form vertical video is maybe the way to go these days and yeah catch you in the next one